it's time for another road trip. That's me trying to be dramatic. I don't know why. So as some of you know, I'm on vacation this week, uh, which means uh, that I've basically cleared my calendar this week of appointments and uh, I'm not in the office this week. But I did want to take one day this week uh, to do kind of a one day pilgrimage and a retreat, make a day a sort of a, a retreat day. Uh, you know, I always talk about the importance of, of, of taking time to pray. Uh, not really just trying to squeeze prayer into our day, uh, but to actually set aside time for prayer. But it's also good to take, um, you know, to actually do a retreat where we retreat from our everyday life and, and go somewhere and, and just be in the, alone with the Lord um, so that He can uh, renew us and strengthen us and uh, uh, so that we can go back into our everyday life um, you know, with a new, newfound spiritual strength. So that's what I'm trying to do today. And so I decided that today I'm going to take a trip out to Grass Lake, Michigan and the Shrine of St. Joseph. Uh, Grass Lake, Michigan is in uh, Jackson County. So it's about two hours from Lakeport. And uh, I've actually been there. Um, this will actually be my third time there, I think. Um, but I haven't been there in uh, probably 11 or 12 years. But I was reading up on the history of the shrine last night. Basically, it's um, centered around um, a priest named Father Louis uh, Guanella. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. Uh, but he died about um, 110, 120 years ago. And um, you know, he was inspired by God to build a shrine dedicated to Saint Joseph where people could come and pray, uh, especially for the suffering and for the sick. Uh, for, for the time that, that, the, that the shrine has been active, this is what people have been doing. Um, not only going there for a place of prayer, uh, but to bring the intentions of those who are sick and suffering to our Lord and St. Joseph. And so with this year being the year of St. Joseph, of course, um, and today happens to be a Wednesday, which is uh, traditionally Wednesdays are dedicated to devotion to St. Joseph. Uh, I thought this would be a great time uh, to visit the shrine. I, uh, of course, uh, brought my uh, bravery with me. We'll pray the Liturgy of the Hours while I'm there and the Rosary as well. And um, we'll, we'll see how the day goes. This is a description of the Pious Union of St. Joseph, written by Father Leo Joseph Xavier. Most people know that there are churches and shrines dedicated to St. Joseph worldwide, but there is only one church in the United States that is dedicated to St. Joseph, patron of the suffering and dying, the Pious Union of St. Joseph in Grass Lake, Michigan. The Pious Union of St. Joseph emerged from the loving heart of St. Louis Guanella. He perceived that the last hours of people's lives were the most important in every human life. In these hours, all dying people make the decision to abandon their lives to the bountiful mercy of God. The first shrine dedicated to St. Joseph as patron of the suffering and dying was instituted by St. Louis Guanella in Trionfale, Italy. 
The Pious Union of St. Joseph was officially approved by Pope St. Pius X in February 17, 1913 and extended to the whole world on February 12, 1914. The shrine in Grass Lake was approved by Most Reverend Bishop Kenneth Povich, Bishop of Lansing, on August 3, 1987. So you can see a view of the landscape from here. This is taken from the top of the Calvary Shrine. Over on the left is the main chapel, and then off to the right is the grotto. Here at Calvary, there is an outdoor altar where Mass can be celebrated. And as you make your way to the crucifix, you see seven steps. And on each step is written one of the seven last words of Christ, which he spoke from the cross. And here you see the grotto, modeled after the famous grotto in Lourdes, where our Blessed Mother appeared to St. Bernadette. The grotto is a great place to come and pray to Our Lady for her intercession. There's also an outdoor Stations of the Cross, where one can come and meditate on our Lord's Passion. And then, of course, the path of the Stations leads you to Calvary. Well, this is definitely a very quiet and a very peaceful place. Uh, it's not a very big place, but there's uh, a lot of places to come and pray. Um, you know, St. Joseph, the more we honor a saint, the more uh, titles uh, tradition gives to the saint. And, you know, nobody has more titles than our Blessed Mother because she is the greatest and the queen of all saints. Uh, but after our Blessed Mother, uh, St. Joseph is the greatest of all saints. and. Uh, Likewise, we give him many titles as well. And one of the titles that we give to St. Joseph, uh, he is Hope of the Sick. Uh, he is Patron of the Sick. And uh, I know at St. Edward we have uh, a lot of parishioners, a lot of people at our parish who are uh, sick, uh, suffering from uh, many kinds of uh, ailments and maladies. And um, I've, I'm thinking of all of them as I come here to pray. Um, and just as a reminder for all of us of the importance of praying for the sick. And uh, so I'm going to go into the chapel, spend some time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and uh, I will pray for uh, all the sick members of our parish and, and all the members of our parish as well, um, but in a special way entrust our sick uh, to St. Joseph. Well, I'm on my way home now. I hope you had a good chance to uh, see what, uh, what's here at the Shrine of St. Joseph. Uh, very quiet, very peaceful place. Um, I was here about three to four hours and saw maybe five people come into the chapel to pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, nobody outside. It is pretty hot today. It's, uh, I think it's in the mid 80s today, so nobody was outside praying. Um, but a few people coming in, like I said, um, but again, a good reminder for us uh, to pray to St. Joseph, especially during this year of St. Joseph. Um, you know, as I said earlier, he's the patron of the sick, so we pray for all those who are sick. He's also the, uh, the protector of the church. Um, just as St. Joseph protected Jesus, the head of the church, uh, so is he the protector of the body of Christ, the church here on earth. And so. Um, in these days when the church is facing a lot of challenges, uh, we need those prayers to St. Joseph that he might uh, watch over the church here on earth and all of her members. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, St. Joseph, pray for us. God bless you.